So um, I, I can't really, I don't want to give a game away on that, on it, but because it's it's one of those characters, you know. Um, but it's terrific, terrific, uh, terrific role and great script. It's going to be a good movie, I think. Yeah, it was a real shame because there was there were all these rumours and then nothing really came of it. And I was, you know, are you going to work with Quentin in the future? Have you guys been talking about other projects apart from that? Yeah, we, well, that was the one we were going to do. We tried and we tried our damnedest to make it work. We couldn't do it in the end. Um, I, the only reason it didn't come running in, in the press is because I don't talk to the press too much. <laughs> <laughs> especially in Britain. Oh, yes, especially because there's there's so much tabloids and so much pressure, you know, the way that they are. Well, it's, yeah, it's very bizarre. Yeah, very odd. odd uh, but, um, so I, uh, yeah, so I just thought, you know, we just, we talked about it and we, we struggled with it and finally we was like, oh, I can't do it, I'm, you know, and, um, and we, but it didn't. Yeah, hopefully down the line we'll get a chance to do something else. Um, I think he, he tries to get all of the guys from the original films that he did back and through and in something, you know, because um, it's fun, because it's nice to just get together and gossip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, I want to stay on that subject. You worked with several actors on Reservoir Dogs, including Lawrence Tierney, who I know was quite an experience, and Chris Penn, who unfortunately are no longer with us. What are your memories of working with both Lawrence and Chris? Well, Lawrence was one of the sort of true kind of eccentrics and tough, tough guys of, of Hollywood. You know, I mean, I think at one point they took him to the state line and, and threw him across in California. I was a, I mean, he was a real handful because he was known for, uh, he came up with uh, with Mitchum and those guys and he was, uh, he had played Dillinger in that fantastic movie back then. And, you know, he's, he was a real hard man though. And and we started off when we started working together. He's he's completely bonkers, um, and, but in a, you know in a very interesting way. And we didn't get on very well at the beginning. And by the end of it, we were sort of you know in pubs around Hollywood, sort of hanging out. He was a very a very kind of I don't know. He had a tough life, you know. He had a tough life, and he and he had a tough life up until the end, you know. And Chris was uh, I thought a very very good actor. I mean, I, I remember him. Um, from I think he was in Footloose and what, what else was he in? He was in a, he was in a close range with his brother with Sean, and um, he's very very good. Uh, and we did a couple of films together. We did Reservoir Dogs, which he was I think uh, was one of the best, perform- best performances in that. And then we went on and did a film called Deceiver together uh, with the Pate brothers, Pate twins. And Renny Zellweger uh, and myself and him, and it, which is a kind of little independent movie, very very interesting little independent movie. Um, and uh, and then uh, yeah, he sadly passed away. But he was good. He's wild and fun and larger than life and uh, yeah, a crazy man. <laughs> Were you there when Lawrence Tierney and Quentin Tarantino had their infamous on-set argument during the filming of Reservoir Dogs? What are we talking about? No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there was a, there, yeah. I, I, yeah, I experienced a bit of that. We all did with with Lawrence. But you got to love him. Yeah, I was there for that. What happened? Was it something that Lawrence Tierney was messing up his lines and it just got a bit kind of rough and tumble, and then it was all all right after? I was all right. I was all right. I mean, you know, every day was a wild day because we you know making a film and shooting it in about five weeks and it was, it was crazy. Um, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, unless Quentin wants to tell the story, it's not for me to tell it. Okay, fair enough. Now, one of your somewhat less, uh, well, your lesser known films compared to stuff that you've done is Gridlocked, which I think is a terrific film, starring uh, Tupac in one of his last performances before his death. How was your experience of the film itself and working with Tupac? It was really good. I didn't know, I mean, you, you know, I didn't, I knew who Tupac was, but I was, I didn't know that he was an actor. He actually was an actor before he was a rapper, so... Um, but um, so I wasn't very keen on uh, working with him, I mean, or him being cast in a role. So uh, he came and came to meet me before he was even before he was cast um, to sort of talk to me and uh, and to convince me that it was a good idea. And and uh, and we met in a in a restaurant in um, in Hollywood, and uh, he was extraordinary. I just I, I was I was so relieved when I met him because he he knew the character knew what he was doing he had real compassion for the predicament that the guy was in and in, he was after all he was playing the more calm and the more um, mature of the two characters you know and I found him to be and, and I found working with him to be a, a delight 
an absolute delight. Now, only, the only time I, I kind of got a bit cross with him was when he was go, he would have to go to the studio, recording studio, after working on the film set all day. And, and also he would be directing and being in videos and stuff because of his commitments to his music. And, and then he's all constantly writing and writing. And writing. so he, it, he found that he was so exhausted on set and I sort of put my foot down with him and said, you can't, you can't, we've only got, you've got to have your energy up. Cause he was delivering a really nice performance. I thought, um, and, uh, and he did bless him. He, he stopped. He, he just put everything aside and we finished the film because he was dozing off in, you know, in the corner. He was so exhausted. He worked on so many different projects all the time. Um, I miss him. I, th- I really, really enjoyed being with him and we became very good kind of friends towards the end. And, uh, and it's, just, it's an awful shame what happened to him. Yeah, because uh, one of the things that, I mean, because I was a big Tupac fan, one of the things that was coming around that time was the East and West Coast rivalry that was going on in hip hop, which was which he was the focal point. Did you know anything about that going into the movie itself? Yeah, I knew stuff that you'd heard in the press, which was usually crap. So I I talked to him about it before we went in, you know, and he, he gave me the lowdown. So then I knew some. And, uh, you know, and there were issues that uh, cropped up down by the set a couple of times, but we, we kind of managed to keep away from it all. But generally, um, what, I'll tell you what, we, what musically people ended up missing um, was that he wanted to go on, on the road with a band, full on band. Really? And, and that's what he was planning to do. He wanted to, to take what he was doing and put it into a different arena. And it would have, I think the music would have been something wonderful to hear. And to see, and he was gonna. That was his next uh, kind of, you know, beat. That was where he was gonna go, and you know, with full-on guitars and everything, and just really go at it, and do some wild stuff. And we never got to see it because the bastard shot him. You know. Yeah, that, that's phenomenal. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. He talked to me about it. He was very excited about it, and um, never got to do it, unfortunately. Now, I mean, out of all the films you've done, what's been the most rewarding for you, performance-wise, I guess? I, well, perform- well, a, a ton of them, you know. I mean, I, th- I think back to working with Alan Clark and Made in Britain at the very beginning and um, Mike Lee and Altman and Frears and all these guys. I mean, I've been very, very lucky, incredibly lucky, you know, to... I, I mean, most most actors that I know, of, of, if they can get there, they've worked with sort of a couple of goodies, you know, and they're a couple of decent runs that are stabs at a good performance or whatever. I mean, they're very rare, you know, and uh, so I, I had a, a huge sort of dirge of them, you know, working with Quentin, working, you know, with Herzog and all these guys. I had a good run at that, you know, and it's, I also got to direct in the, in the middle of that, and which is where I really want to go back to, and the, this TV thing will help me do that. It gives me a bit of cash in the bank and I can go off and direct, so... You know, all in all, uh, I've had a great, a great um, time with it. I don't know what's going to come next, and that's why everything should be an experiment. And you shouldn't settle on just the one thing. You got to keep moving. You know. I mean, are you surprised by how far you've come from starting your career? Like you were saying, you did Made in Britain, which was 1982, and 20 what somewhat years later, you're somewhat of a large Hollywood star. Do you ever look back and go, "Wow, I can't believe how far I've come"? You know. I can't believe any of it. I mean, I didn't. I, at the time, I couldn't believe it. It was ridiculous. Because I did, my, it was this Jill Walker, this this woman at, at, at when I was at school, who for whatever she saw a, a pretty sort of roughed up kid actually I think, and she I auditioned for a school play as a joke and she snagged me and threw me in it, and it got me got me interested and it kept me, it kept me uh, away from all the the sh- you know the shit that goes on in life and and uh, gave me a real passion. So it's just one woman, this one teacher at school sorted me out on that. And then every, everything else has been a bonus. I never went to drama school. I just kept working. I did lots of plays and, and um, you know, and then grabbed, uh, grabbed that role when Alan offered it. Because I heard you were a sculptor beforehand. Uh, you were going to be a sculptor. I was at art school, yeah. Oh, really? I, was, I went to Campbell Art School in London and I was I started I did the foundation course and then I started the BA course as a sculptor and I lasted for about a year 